All right, here's um, photosynthesis, something I think probably one of the topics a lot of people uh, find a bit iffy, um, a bit difficult to do, but it's really not too bad. Uh, we'll start off with the, the formula, we'll do the, the simple um, simpler word version first. Carbon dioxide, which seems to be everyone's favourite chemical actually, whenever people uh, get a question, ask them the name of a chemical and they're not sure what to put, they always end up writing carbon dioxide. But there we go. Uh, carbon dioxide plus water makes glucose plus, uh, or it's converted, sorry, to glucose and oxygen, so here's our reactants, here's our products, this is what we make. Um, so we use glucose here, um, this simple sugar which we'll come back to um, in a little bit more detail in a second. You really should know the balanced formula, which is CO2, H2O, C6, H12O6, and O2, and just balance that out, dead straightforward. Six carbons, six waters, six oxygen. So there's lots of sixes ended up in here. Um, do also make sure when you write the formula that you don't forget we also need light. Sometimes people put sunlight, but it doesn't have to be sunlight. Really what we're after here is um, light energy. But we'll come back to that in a second. And chlorophyll. So there's actually quite a few bits in here. Uh, the chlorophyll is written... Um, well, it's, it's underneath, it doesn't matter which way around you put these. But it's written here to show that um, it, it contains enzymes. And when we write a chemical formula out that contains enzymes, we would write it on the arrow to show that although it's part of the reaction, it's not used up in the reaction, it's not changed in any way, so that's why we, we put the chlorophyll uh, on here. Okay, so what, what's happening? Well, chlorophyll is um, a chemical, a better word for it is it a pigment. Okay, you might have heard of pigments when you're talking about uh, things like colours. So we call uh, uh, chlorophyll a chemical pigment, and what it can do is it converts um, the energy and light into a usable form. In fact, what it does is it splits water. So this um, water molecule that we need, the light energy is used to split it up into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, I'm not going to bother putting charges on here or ions. We get a bit confusing. But all you need to know is that the energy is used to split the water. Now. Something that, that runs a common theme all the way through um, these kind of reactions, the same with respiration, it looks pretty straightforward. You might not think so, but it, it looks as if we just go, here's the carbon dioxide, here's the water, biff, baff, boof, and suddenly we've got all this stuff. Now, in reality, there's dozens of reactions going on in here, and this arrow is kind of a shortcut to say, look, there's lots of reactions happening. Every single reaction, every step of that reaction, every time we move a bit and change a bit and add something on requires a different enzyme so all the stuff we know about enzymes about them working best at certain temperatures about them being specific about them having the active site that's a complementary shape and so on all that stuff holds true we don't usually think or we don't often think that enzymes are involved but they are there's lots of them there's an enzyme involved that splits the water but in order to split the water it uses energy from uh, the light okay Chlorophyll, this chemical, is found inside of these bags called chloroplasts. Don't mistake the two. Um, another common thing, people get confused the wording here. Chlorophyll absorbs light. That's the best word to use. It absorbs light. It doesn't catch it. It's not a very good word, really. It absorbs light. So chlorophyll absorbs light energy. The chloroplasts themselves are, um, I suppose they look like a big bag like this, and what we have inside are a series of folded membranes. They often look like, um, they're described as like a stack of plates or a stack of pancakes, those kind of roundy pancakes you get at McDonald's. Um, and these are um, membranes, folded membranes. Lots of folding, large surface area, and the chlorophyll sits on these um, folded membranes. There's lots and lots and lots of it. Okay, and there they go. Um, these are uh, in the book. It gives you a value of between four and ten micrometers. Remember, a micrometer is a thousandth of a millimeter. So the large ones, of these, you could fit a hundred of them into a millimeter, just to give you a, a, a rough idea. Okay, so that's the chloroplast. The chlorophyll 
sits on these little membranes inside of here. Okay. Um, now the a good big thing to get asked here is what happens to um, the glucose that we make in uh, photosynthesis. Well, three things really. One, it's converted to into other chemicals. Remember, plants have to. Uh, when we talk about plants making their own food, well, yeah, I suppose they do. What they do is they make their own glucose, and they use that glucose as a, a building block to make other things. So, um, other carbohydrates um, that might be needed, for example, fructose, the sugar found in fruits. There's another carbohydrate. Um, cellulose. And cellulose is a, a complex carbohydrate, it's a big long chain and it's, it's found in, or it's what makes up plant cell walls, really tough um, substance. Um, it's also the base of things like cotton, so it's actually a really strong substance. Um, you could say that it's a, cellulose is actually a polymer, a bit of crossover with chemistry there, it's a polymer of glucose. So we can build it into these big long chains. Okay. We also big one is um, the glucose is converted into starch, and starch is the storage material for plants, just like animals would store fat. Um, plants can also store fat. Um, these are the chemicals we should have put up here as well. Things like lipids, um, proteins, everything the chemi uh, everything a plant would need, everything that we would eat, the plant is having to make itself. Um, but starch is a storage um, material. In fact, we do have, um, as I said fats before, it's probably not, not the best example. Animals can store carbohydrates. We store it in something called glycogen. Um, but we don't store it for very long. It's not a very efficient store for us. Plants can store lots of starch. If you think of something like a potato or a carrot, it's basically a big store of starch that the plant's got um, underground. It's spent all summer um, making that starch, storing it up there, ready for the, the winter when it'll be too cold and dark for photosynthesis. And of course, we come along and pull it out the ground. Poor old plants. Um, the glucose is also used in. Um, I should put this down. In respiration. People forget that plants also respire, but of course they do. Respiration is a um, chemical process that releases energy from um, from chemicals, in this case it would be glucose. Okay. One last little bit, might as well just mention on here while we're, while we're on the subject, something that people always seem to be um, confused with. Here's a plant, and we can tell it's a plant cell. It's got a cell wall made of cellulose, as we now know, and we'd have a membrane on the inside. Usually, it's pushed right up against the cell wall, so you don't really see it. But inside, we have this mystery thing called a vacuole. And even though you do it in uh, year seven, people never seem to quite remember what it is. Um, the vacuole contains cell sap, which is basically sugary liquid, if you like. Um, there'd be things, plenty of glucose in here. It means that if you remember your osmosis, water will move towards wherever there's the more sugary liquid. So it's a way for the plant to um, take up water and stay nice and turgid, nice and um, get this cell wall stretched out. It's not rigid, a bit of flexibility in there, but it, it stretches out, stays nice and full of water. You might also be asked to identify various bits floating around inside a plant cell. So you know, we might have a few chloroplasts. Generally, if we're looking at chloroplasts, they'll be near the side of the sunlight. There might be some grains of starch floating around in here as well. Starch grains. Okay, but that's basically everything that you've got in a plant cell.